Yo, what is going on guys? Savage here. Today I've got a very special uh, gameplay for you guys. So basically I asked you guys to upload your gameplay to YouTube and submit it to me via Twitter. And one of the subscribers did do that. Sean H uh, sent me his gameplay. So we're gonna be analyzing that today. And I'm very excited for it. I have not seen the footage at all. So we're gonna be doing this in real time. But guys, before we dive into, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Again, my objective is just to make everybody better at Warzone. I want a better playing field. I want better matches. I want better games. I want more intense fights. Um, and that's not gonna happen as long as people just aren't learning. But guys, without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, guys, so we're diving to TV station. This is ballsy. Um, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've actually landed TV station off the initial jump. I'm not sure exactly how many people are around. That's another thing I would recommend is when you're parachuting, if you're actually gliding, start just analyzing the situation, scan the area, make sure you're by yourself. That way, when you do land, you have somewhat of an idea of how many people are gonna be around you. All right, so right off the dump, he's got a bison and a plate. Um, instantly pop the plate. I like it. But again, guys, because it's the beginning of the match, I would keep moving. Luckily, he didn't move into the building. and He's able to pop the plate and uh, that guy just happened to appear in the window. So that was actually a good play on his part. I would have moved inside the building and probably got demolished. So um, it, it worked out. It worked out. So good play. You always want to stay moving, though, regardless. Um, utilize your sprint, too. Utilize your sprint. You want to sprint through the looting area. You want to sprint through everywhere. Whether you're looting, whether you're running from spot to spot, whether you're pushing enemy, you always want to sprint. This right here is just going to slow your momentum and it's going to slow your gameplay. And when you, if you watch me play, I'll literally just sprint through a building, loot it within a second, um, and then and then be out. All right, so right here, he's in a gunfight. I'll say this. Let's rewind this real quick. So right here, he's about to go in a gunfight. Shots are fired. So at this point, you're hit. My first reaction would be to hide behind this little booth. Why? Because if you look right here, there's a hit indicator, which says you're you're being shot from this angle. So basically, if you sit behind here, it might not be 100% cover. It might be concealment more than cover. I don't know. I'm not really familiar with this building. I would imagine bullets can probably penetrate it, but it's better than nothing. Um, so at this point, I would run to this right here and sit behind it and, you know, replay it up get my ammo situation, kind of analyze the situation, and then pop up and start fighting. Um, instead, he goes over for a vault. Very, very ballsy on the vault. Uh, you just put yourself at a more vulnerable position, being like, hey, guys, I'm here. Shoot me. One thing I want to say about your aim is players have a tendency to ADS before they're actually snapped onto the target. If you look right here, the target's sitting right here. And he ADSs before his crosshair is even on this guy. I will not ADS on the target until my center of the screen, until my crosshair is already locked onto him. And then I'll ADS. The reason for my, you know, my strict sensitivity is so that when I am ADS and he starts moving side by side, I can be more accurate. So for some reason, players have a tendency to ADS before they're actually locked onto the target. This is a huge problem within any shooter, honestly. And, and you know, he's not alone. I'm, I'm again, I'm not trolling him at all. He's not alone in this. Players do this all the time in every game. Um, and it's honestly not even like a, a newbie or a beginner thing to do. This is pretty, this is pretty average. It's pretty uh, much the norm. So basically, guys, if you want to improve your accuracy, the first thing you need to do and, the, and playing against bots is the best way to do this. But you want to look at the target, make sure your little dot on your screen is lined up with the target and then ADS. You don't want to ADS this far because when you watch, when he tries to transition, your ADS sensitivity is way slower. So it takes longer to respond and to snap on that target. Um, and then right there, if you notice, he actually overshot the target too. Again, guys, that comes into play with panicking as well. So like your ADS, you're not on the target. Now you're having to rush an ADS on him. So you're trying to snap, you're trying to flick onto him um, and you're panicking. So he overshot the target. Um, luckily he ends up getting the armor break and gets the down. So, I mean, it worked out, but again, to better your gameplay, try whatever you're shooting at a target to always make sure the center of your screen, that little dot is lined up with the enemy before you ADS. I like it. Go ahead and reload your guns. I, I'm actually guilty of this and I, I never talk about it, but you want to always make sure your guns are reloaded after a fight. Uh, I always run into battles half magged. And it's, it's, it's a huge problem of mine. So it's something I'm learning from. Um, it's something I can learn from you, actually. So, all right. So right now we have a search objective marked. Um, they just lost a teammate to another guy. And they need to be making their way to that search. That way they can go ahead and get money, get their loadout, and possibly buy their friend back if he loses the gulag. All right. 
I'm assuming he lost the gulag because he just marked the buy station, which is fine. It happens, man. Not everybody can win the gulags, and gulags right now are really, really just, they're just fine. All right, again, um, when it comes to TV station, one of the reasons why I avoid this place is just because I don't know the building. I don't know the layout, and I don't know how to navigate it and get to where I need to go. Um, for instance, I think that's what he's struggling with right now. The search object is on top of him. He's trying to find a way to the roof. Um, I believe the only way to the roof is on the outside of the building on the other side. Um, but it hits something he's struggling with right here. Again, guys, if you don't know the area, don't land there because you can get thrown in positions like this. All right, unfortunately, the last search object is in the tower. That's just very unfortunate, man, honestly. Uh, you know, there's really no strategy to this. Climbing the stairs is very, very risky, uh, or the ladder is, is very risky, but you know, it, it's kind of out there. No one's really around, so he should be fine. I will tell you guys this. Um, I try not to waste my time with climbing rocks because half the rocks you should be able to climb up. You can't, and you end up getting shot while you're trying to figure it out and navigate it. Um, he actually knew what he was doing, so good on you, brother. Um, but I would have gone up a different angle and just save myself the time. But that's more just personal preference than anything. But all right, guys, so right now we have a full team. They bought their guy back and we have enough for a loadout. They actually have enough for loadout plates and possibly uh, a UAV. So what they should be doing is making their way back to the buy station. But I want you guys to notice right now, and this is a team play thing. This isn't anything on, on, on him. This, I don't know if this is his normal team. I don't know if he knows these people or not. Um, but they need to be staying together. So basically, they have enough for a loadout. He's got six grand. He's got almost four. He's got two, and he's got eight. So basically, they need the loadout. They don't have one. For some reason, their team is way, way off to the south. And judging by the little mark right here, I'm assuming they're shooting at somebody. They're fighting somebody. Um, you know, you just bought back your fourth player, so you know he's not going to have anything. So if he's get if if the guy we're spectating is getting the search objectives, and he's coming back in. What are these two guys doing trying to two before the entire the entire map? If anything, these guys should be with the guy we're spectating so that they can get the search objectives together and buy their loadout as fast as possible. Now, what we're going to run into is a lot of wasted time. All right, right now, Power and Port Trop are off doing their own thing. Again, it's not a terrible thing. I'm sure they're great players, but it's better to go into fights with a full team. There's no reason to half-ass it because, yeah, you might be able to two before them, but you might get third-partied as well. You probably will get third-partied. So now here we have a situation again. We have all four teammates up. We've already spent $4,500 buying back um, Confident. Is it Confident? Confined Elf, my bad. Uh, we spent $4,500 buying Confined Elf. And now we're down two teammates. And we're down their money. So now we're, we're back down to two teammates and now three teammates. We have no loadout. We have now no money. Um, Guys, again, I want to always stress the importance of paying attention to everything on your UI. Pay attention to your mini map, pay attention to your ammo count, pay attention to your, your health, your armor plate situation, and your money. There was no reason, there was no reason for his two teammates to get in this fight. They had a buy station that was safe next to them. They had already cleared out TV station. I do like the fact that they moved out of TV station quickly, and we'll get to that in another video, but they should have bought right off the dump. Big mistake. But again, this, this isn't Sean's mistake. This is a team mistake. I think Sean went the right play going for the search objectives. So great on you, brother. You got your team plenty of money. Unfortunately, your team, uh, your team blew it. All right, so now we're in a situation where Sean is in a 1v whatever situation. We really don't know. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of running from fights, you know, in, in solos, duos, or even trios. But when it comes to quads and you're outnumbered, the best thing to do would be to get in that vehicle and dip the hell out. Um, right now, I want to go ahead and also point out this. Right now, Sean is sitting in a bathroom, just sitting. This is something you see players do a lot. And what this does is it fucks you. So basically in this situation, um, this is going to hurt you more than it helps you. So let's say a team does push in here, right? What's your plan? What's your plan of action to hide and not get found? No. So what would be what would be your, your plan in this situation as far as like a positive outlook? I can't think of any. Maybe it's because I'm more just worried about what's actually going to happen, but I really don't see a reason for this. And you see players do this a lot. Again, this isn't just on Sean. This is pretty much the norm. So basically what this allows the other team to do is allows the other team to flank from multiple positions. So basically gives the other team time to form a perimeter. 
uh, and pushed in from multiple angles, which will shock it all the shit out of Sean. So again, in this situation, as soon as we were down two guys, I would have told Confined Elf, hey bro, let's dip the hell out of this. Those guys are off on their own. Um, and then we could utilize our money to buy our loadout stash. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. So Confined Elf did die as well. So now it's Sean. I would go ahead and just make a beeline for the vehicle. You might get shot out of the vehicle, sure. But I think it's a better option than waiting for the team to push onto you and kill you. This is well, and this is something that goes I go back to. Um, if you know you're getting shot at, the team knows y'all are there. The enemy team has already killed your teammates. They haven't looted your teammates yet, so they know you're there. And if you look on the roof, he's still just ADS, just waiting for you to come out. So basically in this situation, don't ever put yourself in the line of fire. So according to the minimap and what I know right now from the fight, there's a guy on the roof. There's a guy on the hill over here. If you look at the minimap, there's a guy over here on the hill. Um, I saw it light up when he was shooting uh, Confined Elf. And there's also somebody else I'm thinking on the ground level, maybe in the doorway right here um, as well. So you're looking at three guys. I wouldn't solo three guys. Hell no, especially that spread apart. Because as soon as you peek one of them, another one's gonna shoot you from a different angle. So again, guys, I always say, you know, try not to run from fights. You wanna learn from your experience, but if you're outnumbered, you're outgunned, bail, bail, honestly, bail. You can't improve your gunfighting skill if uh, you don't have guns to fight with. All right, he spots the other guy coming down the hill right here. And this is exactly what I was talking about. The longer you sit in the building, guys, the easier it is for the team to push you. So this guy's still remaining on top. Uh, he's got aerial coverage his entire facility. So when you run out of here, you're going to get shot. Um, but because he's so far, it's not a guaranteed death. Um, so this guy right here has already pushed you over here. And I'm assuming the third is probably pushing up from the other side as well. But right now we have Sean full plated up. Um, the guy's right on him. His teammate is landing back on his stuff, which is very ballsy for the teammate. All right, this is something we talked about in my other video as well. And I wanna, I wanna go back to this point. So this enemy vaults through the window after getting shot and he's able to get the down. Right here, in this situation, change your weapon. And basically what I mean by that is just, if you sit there and you waste time to reload, his teammates are gonna shoot you as you're, as you're sitting there vulnerable, trying to get the execution. So switch your weapons, pop a couple shots in his head and rotate out of there. First off, you, they already know you're in the building. When you get the down, don't go back in the building. The first move I would do is dip. You got the kill. This side of the map should be clear. You got the one guy on the roof. You got the one guy flanking from the other side behind you on the hill. Um, he's probably probably in the building by, at this point. So what I would do is I would kill him, um, work the vehicle, run to the building. Um, but if he goes back in the building, it's going to be real dangerous for him. It's going to be a worst case scenario. <clears throat> so also right here, I, I preached this in my last video, actually. I'm glad we're doing I'm glad we, I have this video to analyze. A lot of players, again, this anything against Sean, this is the norm. This is the norm. Players love to ADS while they pop a reload. If you're shooting a target at range, you don't want to lose the track of the target, stay ads I get that. Snipers, ARs, understandable. Close range fighting, there's never a reason in close range situations that you need to be ads on the target while popping a reload. Um, again, when you're ads what happens? It slows your movement speed. It slows your action time. It narrows your field of view. It tunnels you. There's no reason to be ADS while you're popping a reload on this guy at all. Um, you can hit him with two melee kills. That's a fast way to get it done. Don't go in for an execution uh, animation, but just melee him, switch your weapons, pop a couple in his head and rotate outward. Uh, and then right here, just as I was saying, you see the enemy come through the other side um, and, and shoot him and down him. Sean allowed the team enough time to rotate. That way, when he did down the enemy, ultimately, the other enemy's teammates were right there already on you. Again, guys, when you're in a fighting situation, no matter what the situation is, whether you're outnumbered, whether you're outgunned, whether you outnumber, outgun the enemy, you want to be able to keep the enemy separated. Don't allow the enemy time to flank on you, get together and be in position. Um, you had a guy on the roof, they would have had their loadout, would have been an easy pick. Nobody could get to him, easy pick and execution. You had the guy on the mountain by himself. Again, if the team would have got their loadout, um, easy pick, easy kill. Um, this guy right here, I knew he was coming. We never saw this guy. The guy that he killed, we never saw him. How did I know he was coming? This is this is what I call the uh, fuck you method. You know what I mean? So basically my theory behind the fuck you method is whenever you're pushing an enemy team, separate a little bit, stay close in case you get down, but separate a little bit. That way you can hit them from multiple angles. And that's exactly what they did to Sean. However, there is a flip side to that. There's a reverse to that. So basically in Sean's situation, should they had been loaded out, should they had been together and been alive, um, or even 
if Sean would have had his loadout and been alone. He literally could have picked these guys one by one by one. If he would have had a loadout, he could have knocked the guy on the roof first. Easy. And then the guy that he saw in the window pushing from the street side, from the hill, he could have knocked him secondly. And then this guy that vaulted through the window, he could have taken him out thirdly. So, I mean, when, when, when you do the fuck you method, when you separate a little bit, um, you, tend, you put yourself in a vulnerable position. But the whole point behind it, the whole premise is to hit them at once. These guys kind of did it, but they hit one at a time. One, one, and then, well, the guy on the roof, he never really came. But they kind of did it a little fucked up. So what would I have done? If I was Sean, I would have made a beeline to the vehicle and dipped the hell out. Count your losses, bro. Um, two, his teammates never should have come back, ever. You're going to land on their loadout to die honestly um to die you're not gonna be able to pick up your guns fast enough the enemy team's already on the premise they're already in the facility uh, just give it up land somewhere different regroup regain also what i would have done if i was the enemy team i mean they played that kind of well what i would have improved on for the enemy side is the guy who pushed from the hill across the street and the guy who came up from the storage i would have had them in sync pushed together that way none of them would have got down all right so now we have the gulag again the gulag is just it's very hard to give you guys advice on the gulag it's so very skillless honestly I, I, I just don't find that the gulag is any skill whatsoever all right so we have sean and the gulag rocking the scar this is a very hard weapon to use in general um as you see right here i want to go ahead and make another note um as far as shooting and adsing before you're actually snapping to the enemy this is something that takes practice right here this is something that takes a lot of practice when it comes to playing any shooters um and again you don't have to load up against bots you don't have to you know practice 100 hours a day but just try to make a mental note that when you're shooting at targets, make sure that your little dot right here is snapped onto them before you ADS. So I'm gonna go ahead and slow it down to 0.25 speed. And we're gonna notice not only does he ADS on the wall and not the enemy, he also shoots the wall and not the enemy. And what this does is it creates a panic effect. Um, so at this point, you're gonna see him. He's gonna overshoot the target probably. Um, he's gonna spray around the target. He might hit him once, but because he's not lined up on site, um, his precision is basically tank. As you can see right here, he actually never even hits the target. He hits him one time right at the end. Um, again, nothing against Sean at all by any stretch of imagination. This is the norm. This is something that I'm trying to get players away from. This is something that I struggled with when I was playing, you know, Call of Duty a few years ago and I was playing other shooters a few years ago as well. I mean, even still to this day, we're all guilty of it, but make sure it's not a habit. Make sure, you know, if it happens, you are aware of it, you correct it, and you get better with it. So basically, Sean, my advice for you and your gameplay, um, one, I'm not sure your teammate situation, so I can't really say like, get better teamwork and this and that. They could be randoms, they could be friends of yours, whatever the case may be. But regardless, make sure your teammates are aware of the plan. Um, you had a good plan going for the search objective and getting your stash, I'm assuming was your next move. Your teammates on the other hand had a whole different agenda. Um, if they were your normal squad, make sure that y'all are on the same wavelength before y'all make your next move. Also too, I would sprint throughout the map. Always sprint. Make sure you're always sprinting as much as possible. Um, slide cancel as well. I didn't see slide cancel at all. Make sure if you're getting to your team or whatever the case may be, um, if you're trying to go towards your teammates or a fight, make sure you're slide canceling. If you're trying to run away from a flight, fight, make sure you're slide canceling. Um, also three, whenever you're in a situation where you don't know what to do, run. You don't have to run for the entire fight. You can just reposition and change your angle. And, but while you're running, while you're repositioning, think. Think about what the option is. Think about... You know, as you're running away from that enemy in that situation, think about where the enemies were. We all knew one was on the roof. We all knew one was on the hill, but we didn't know that guy was pushing from storage. How did I know? I didn't watch this before. I knew that because that's what I would have done. Um, And four, and honestly, it's probably the most important, make sure you focus. And, and if any of y'all take anything from this video, uh, again, this is the norm. This isn't just Sean. I see this happen 70, 80% of players that I spectate. Um, When you aim on a target, when you snap on a target, do not ADS until you're locked onto the target. When you're ADS, it slows your movement speed. You're just sitting there, ADS with your rifle. You can kind of sidestep a little bit, but not really. You can kind of jump a little bit, but not really. Um, so you're, you're basically hindered at that point. You're in a vulnerable state when you ADS. So try not to ADS unless you absolutely have to, unless you absolutely are locked onto the target. But if you guys want to see more gameplay, if you guys want me to analyze your gameplay and kind of help you get through here and give you guys my suggestions and things and tips that I would do instead of what you're doing, let me know. Upload your video to YouTube, send me a DM with the link and I can analyze it in the next video. But guys, again, I'm having a lot of fun making this series. I'm getting a lot of love from you guys uh, with it. So I'm really glad everyone's enjoying it. I hope this is helping everyone improve the gameplay. We're gonna keep doing this every damn day. So guys, if you want me to analyze your gameplay, again, upload it to YouTube and tweet it to me. Uh, but until next time, guys, good luck in Warzone. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow me over on Twitch and leave a thumbs up on the video as well. 
guys if you want to check out some other tips and tricks videos make sure you check out these videos right here um but yeah guys until next time good luck in warzone i'll see you in the next one